Hey, what's up guys and welcome back to my channel. Now in today's video, we're going to learn how to code a stopwatch in Python. Now stopwatch is a great program to learn as a beginner. You know, it's simple to understand, but it also has a lot of um, great, you know, foundational pieces in it that will make up your coding career. So without further ado, let's just hop right into the video. Now what you're gonna wanna do is go ahead and open up your Python environment. For me, I use Repl.it. You know, let's just create a new one here. We're gonna obviously use Python and we're just going to call it stopwatch. So let's create it here. All right, guys, now that we're in our Python environment, let's just move this over here and zoom in a little bit so it's easier to see. What we're gonna do first is just import a couple of libraries that we're going to use in our program. So first we need to use the class called time because you know we need time methods um, to you know for the clock to work properly. We need to import um, SYS or you know short for system. Um, that's going to be useful for keeping the stopwatch running later, but not interrupting um, its flow and allowing us to, to still do commands. And then finally, we're going to import select. It will make more sense later, so I won't explain it right now. Essentially, that's the only three things that you're going to need. And now let's think about how we want to lay out our program. We have a stopwatch. It's going to have a couple of capabilities. Um, we need to, something to start the watch. We need something to stop the watch. We need to... Uh, be able to reset it and we needed to you know log the time to our console since this is a console application all of that together uh, we also need you know some basic error handling as well so with that being said i'm going to begin by writing our class for the stopwatch and then we're going to you know set up our program in a way that can handle user input from there so what we're going to do first is create a class we're going to just call it stopwatch and in here, we're going to need a couple of methods. Um, first, we're going to need a you know constructor here. So we're going to say def double underscore init double underscore with self as the parameter here. And we're going to use three variables throughout our uh, stopwatch class here. We're going to need a self dot um, start time. And that's going to be equal to zero. Or actually, I'm, I'm sorry, it's going to be equal to none instead. Then we're going to need a um, variable called elapsed time and that's going to be equal to zero. And then we're going to need something to track whether or not the stopwatch is currently running, and that's just going to be initialized as false. All right, guys, let's move on to our next function. So we're going to create a function called startwatch, and this is going to be in charge of actually beginning our watch. So the first thing we need to do in here is check to make sure that our variable is running. So if not self.isRunning, so we're basically saying, hey, as long as is running is false, which means, you know, obviously the stopwatch is not currently running, then we could go ahead and start the stopwatch. So what we're going to first do is say, hey, our our start time is going to be equal to time dot time. And if we hover over time here, you'll notice that this is just a function that returns the time right now in seconds. You know, if you start the stopwatch at 1235, what you're displaying on it after you start it is how many seconds it's been since 1235 and whatever seconds. So we first need to record that start time and then we can kind of do some, you know, subtraction to display that on the stopwatch so that the user can just see, you know, how many seconds it's been since they clicked start. So now that I've explained that, we're going to also say self dot is running is going to be equal to true because obviously right now it's running we'll do that and then finally we'll just print out stopwatch has started and that's all it's that we're going to need for the start watch function here so let's move on to our next one our next one here is going to be called stopwatch which is kind of funny because i know the whole thing's called stopwatch but we really do need a function to stop the watch um, it just so happens to have the same name as the entire class so unlike start watch we're not checking to make sure that is running is false what we actually need to do is make sure that is running is true to determine if it's even worth it to stop the watch. So we're going to say, hey, if self dot is running is true, what we're first going to do is say, hey, let's um, adjust our elapsed time here. That's going to be equal to the time that it is right now. So time dot time minus whatever the time was when we started. So you're just saying take right now subtract you know maybe it was two minutes ago and that's how many you know that's how many seconds have passed and that's what's going to be stored here in this elapsed time variable and then the other thing we want to do is go ahead and set is running equal to false that way we know it's not running anymore and finally we're going to print stopwatch has stopped now next up on our list here is we're going to create a function called reset watch 
which is going to be in charge of, you know, resetting everything in case we want to start over. So unlike the other ones, this actually isn't going to have any sort of check. We're just going to be simply resetting variables. And all we're going to do is say, hey, you know, self dot elapsed time is equal to zero. Self dot is running is equal to false. Let me scroll down a little bit here. Finally, we're just going to print um, stopwatch has been reset. And finally, what we're going to need our last function as part of the stopwatch class is we're going to call it we're going to call it log time. Actually, we're going to call it log watch time with self as the parameter once again. And what this is going to do is just, you know, display to the console how many seconds it's been. This is kind of a, what the user is going to see. So we're going to have a variable called total time. So total time is equal to that's going to be equal to the self dot elapsed time. And then what we're going to do is say, hey, if self dot is running. So if the stopwatch is running, we're going to go ahead and add to the total time. So total time plus equals our time that it is right now minus the start time that we have recorded into this variable here. Basically, what this is doing is say like, hey, how long has it been? Because, you know, we could have stopped and started this multiple times. So we do need to record the elapsed time. But also, if it's running right now, we need to, you know, be adding to that total time every single second that's passing. That way, the total time is always reflective of how long the stopwatch has actually been running. And finally, the last part of our function here, we're just going to print it out to the console. That way the user knows how long it's been. So what we're going to do is put F, then double quotes. That way we can reference variables directly in this string. And what we're going to say is time, colon, and then some brackets here. And we're going to say total time, colon, dot 2F. And this dot 2F thing basically means like, hey, we want to make it a float. Um, we're doing it to two decimal points here. And that's just to make sure that, you know, in all this complex math and seconds and whatever that's going on, um, we just want to display a pretty easy to read simple number to the user. And then finally, we're going to do space and then just say seconds. That when this is printing out, basically, it's just going to say, you know, the time is, I don't know, 10 seconds. And it's just going to keep going from there. All right, guys, that wraps up our stopwatch class. Now it's time to actually make the program work in terms of handling, you know, the user's interactions with it. So right below the stopwatch class, and once we're fully, you know, backspace and we're not in the, the class anymore, we're going to just create an actual um, variable called stopwatch, and that's going to be equal to our stopwatch class that we just created. And what we're going to do is have a user validation loop. So we're going to say while true, and we're going to ask them a couple of questions. You know, there's there's options like, you know, start, stop, reset. We've done all these, but we have to actually collect the input from the user to know what they want to do. So first, we're going to collect some input. So we're going to say command is equal to the input from the user. And then we're going to say, please enter, oops, please enter one of the following commands with three dots. And then we're going to need a break line. We're going to say start, break line, stop, break line, reset, break line, quit. And if we run this, just to make sure it works here, and I'll bring this console over. So we put all those break lines in there. That way it just looks pretty. And the one last thing that we're missing is we would like a, like a little carrot looking console symbol. So right after quit, we're going to do two break lines and then just the sideways carrot looking symbol. And if I run this again, you'll see what I mean. So now it gives us some ample room after the user sees our options. And then this little carrot is kind of like an indication to them that they need to enter in some sort of, you know, they need to type something out. All right, guys, now that we've done that, we know we have input from the user. Let's validate that input by saying, hey, you know, if the command that they entered in is equal to start, then we're going to want to do one thing. Then we're going to need an else if the command is equal to stop. Oops, stop. We're going to do another thing. Else if, and then just, you know, honestly copy this a couple of times. So we're going to say, you know, the command is reset. We want to do something. If the command is quit, honestly, we're just going to end the entire program. We're going to just break right out of this loop. And then finally, there's going to be an else. And this is just going to say um, invalid command, please. Whoops, please try again. If they enter in some gibberish, it's just going to, you know, prompt again. 
what we're going to do inside of each one of these functions here is if they click start, we're going to reference our stopwatch variable that we just created. And we're going to say, hey, you know, it's a class, so we can reference the methods in the class. We're going to say stopwatch dot start watch. Then same thing down here for stop. We're going to do stopwatch dot stop watch. That way it can stop it. For the reset, we're going to do stopwatch dot um, reset watch. We already have our code set up for if they want to quit. So that's that's basically it for this section. So we do have a one problem here. Um, this will work fine and dandy. Um, but the problem is when we're running the watch, it's going to say like, hey, zero seconds, one seconds, two seconds, and so on. Um, but we can't actually tell it to, hey, stop the watch or reset without fully stopping the program because of that constant console output. So what we're going to do is just do some clever coding down here. We're going to say, hey, if, if stopwatch dot is running, so as long as the stopwatch is currently running, what we're going to do is I'm going to write out this kind of complicated looking line, and I'll try to explain it the best I can um, after it's done. So what you want to do is say if sys dot standard in or stdin is in um, select dot select and then open up some um, parentheses here. First, we're going to put brackets. We're going to say sys dot standard in. Then we're going to have two sets of empty brackets and then a zero. And then finally, right outside that, we're going to say zero and then a colon. So you might wonder what the heck I just typed out. So let me try to explain it the best that I can. So first up, we have this sys.standardin or you know, sys.stdin, whatever you want to pronounce it. Um, this is essentially going to let us um, take in input from the user from the keyboard. Um, this is part of many coding languages. It's a very common theme. You might have heard of it already. But this just this is short for standard input, and it basically means we can um, monitor you know, keyboard actions and some other stuff. This select.select, .select, this is accessing the system's um, standard input and output um, streams. And you might wonder why we have these empty brackets and zeros here. Well, we only care about our input streams. So like, you know, me typing on the keyboard is what we care about. And the first index here, we're directly referencing, right? We're basically saying, hey, go ahead and look around. Is there any, you know, pending keyboard you know actions or anything in our um, input stream taking that one step further it's always this select function here is always going to return a tuple and what we care about is always going to be at index zero so i know that was super complicated and i hopefully it makes sense but if it doesn't feel free to read up on the docs for all these functions but just know that how I have it written out now will work for our use case. If there's any input coming from the keyboard, basically, we're going to instantly break out of the loop. And what we're going to do is get out of this if statement here. We're going to say, hey, um, go ahead and reference the stopwatch. And then we're going to log the watch time. And then we're going to go ahead and say time.sleep. And we're going to sleep for one second. And what this is going to do this sleep function here is when we interrupt it, we're like, hey, uh, I want to reset it. If we don't type anything else, it's kind of just going to sleep for a second and then just continue on because we could have accidentally hit the keyboard. A second, I feel, is also long enough that you could type in whatever command you want. And then, you know, it will intake that command and be like, oh, hey, it wants to, you know, the user wants to reset the watch. So now I have all the explanation out of the way, let's go ahead and test our program to make sure that it works. So I'm gonna drag this console over here. We're gonna click run. So first up we have, please enter one of the following commands. I'm gonna test our user validation by just entering in some garbage. And you'll notice no matter what I do, it just always reprints out the options because it's not valid. So now I guess I'm going to go ahead and start the watch. And you'll notice now it's saying one, two, three, and it's going on and on, which is awesome. And I do notice there is a little tenth of a second little um, lag there. Um, I don't know why that is, but it, it, it's extremely accurate. Who cares what it is? We have a working stopwatch. Now that we have that out of the way, if I want to stop the watch now, what I can do is just interrupt the keyboard and just say stop. Even if I interrupt it and enter an invalid command, it's actually going to keep going because it's not it's not a valid command. But if I do capital S, you'll notice now the stopwatch has stopped. 
So now it's gonna say, hey, please enter one of the following commands. Um, what if we just wanna go ahead and reset it? So it's been reset. Now well, let's start it again. And you'll notice it started back at zero. So finally, what if we wanna quit out of our stopwatch? So let's go ahead and do that. So let's type in quit. And you'll notice it quits out of the program and we are done. So there you guys have it. We have a working stopwatch program. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, go ahead and give it a thumbs up and comment down below for any thoughts or suggestions for the next video. And go ahead and subscribe to my channel for more content like this. And with that being said, thank you guys for watching once again, and I'll see you in the next one.